let's draw in combination blue and some uh, green blue green blue green blue green blue green from the previous part we have already understood about method of outputting VGA video signals in this part we will try to implement output of HDMI signals by FPGA. The task of this part is to connect the output of the HDMI of FPGA to the screen. Then, manipulate the FPGA to give the output to the screen. For simplifying the task, the output is first a white frame on the screen. Then, the code is going to be modified to give out different signal on the display. The FPGA used for this task is FPGA Zybo. Zybo is used because it provides direct connection between FPGA chips and the HDMI connectors without any interconnecting chips like ADV7511. HDMI connectors usually have 19 pins for HDMI connector type A, out of which only 11 pins is in special consideration for uploading the HDMI signals. From the other video explaining about technologies in HDMI, there are four main technologies in HDMI. Firstly, differential signal technologies. Secondly, transition minimization technologies. Thirdly, DC balance technologies. And lastly, embedded of horizontal sinks and vertical sinks. The four technologies are going to be implemented on FPGA Zybo to give out the HDMI signal to the screen. First, a block called Zybo HDMI is initiated with the output is the 11 pin of the HDMI. 1, 2. This is 3, so 5. This is 3 also, so 8, 9, 10, 11. The pin CEC is for communicating with the other devices and is not in interest. The pin HD out enable is only a special pin for Zybo because Zybo have bidirectional HDMI port. This pin is to control which direction should the port is used. For the board that have like separate HDMI input and output port, this pin is not available anymore. The LED is only for debugging purpose. Considering inside algorithms of the block, the first algorithm is differential signals. This is the code for implementation of the differential signal technologies. OBUF DS, output buffer differential signal. This is a primitive of silence which helps us to output the differential signal from a single input signal. The output pad O and OB are connected to the differential output pins of HDMI. This helps us to manipulate two HDMI output differential pins using only one input signal from the FPGA. We have a HDMI output differential pin in total, which could be manipulated by only using four input signal from FPGA using this O buff DS primitive. The second algorithm is transition minimization. In this algorithm, we will apply XR or X0 to the stream in an appropriate way. This is the data flow for the algorithm. As explained in the previous video, if the stream has more ones, it's smarter to use X0, and if the stream has more zero, it's smarter to use XR to do the transition minimization. And the next thing we have to notice in the transition minimization algorithm is that when applying XR X0, we cannot just follow the same as the flow chart. In the flow chart, the value QM1 is calculated based on the value of QM0. This will introduce a delay to the calculation of QM1, and more delays is introduced to the next line where the value of QM2 is calculated based on the value of QM1. And when it comes to QM7, the synchronization of the stream is not maintained anymore. Instead of doing the same as the flowchart, QM1 
can be calculated directly from the input of D0 and D1 as shown here. So QM1 is equal to D0 XR D1 and QM2 is equal to D0 XR D1 XR D2 and the same is implemented until QM7. By doing this at each clock the signal will coming out parallelly in 8 bit immediately. After XR XNR an additional bit QM8 is used to mark which method has been used. If XNR has been used QM8 is mark 0. If XR has been used QM8 is mark 1. Considering about the code for XR and SNR, this is the VHDL implemented code for XR of the stream and similarly this is the implemented code for XNR. The third used algorithm is DC balance algorithm. DC balance is an algorithm used to make sure the ratio of the charge 1 and charge 0 in the long term to be 50-50. If too many charge 1 are sent, the next stream is going to be more charge 0 than vice versa. This is the flow chart to implement this DC balance algorithm. In total, there are three possibilities. The first possibility the flipping or non flipping of the received stream is not really matter. There are two cases. When the accumulated charge on the stream has already been balanced, if the newly received stream is balanced, good. If not, balanced more positive or more negative, not a problem neither. Or, when the newly received stream has a balanced number of 1 and 0, Flipping or non-flipping of the stream is not uh, changing the total charge received. The second possibility is the stream has to be flipped. This is the case when the accumulated charge on the stream is positive and the newly received stream has more ones or the accumulated charge on the stream is negative and the newly received stream has more zeros. Flipping the newly received stream will help to introduce more charge of the opposite side and balance the stream. The third possibility, the received stream has to be non-flipped. This is the case when the accumulated charge on the stream is positive and the newly received stream has more zeros. Or, the accumulated charge on the stream is negative and the newly received stream has more one. Non flipping the newly received stream will help to introduce more charge of the opposite side and balance the stream. After DC balance algorithm, an additional bit Q out 9 is added to the stream to mark that the stream has been flipped or non flip. If the stream has been flipped, Q out 9 is mark 1. If the stream has been non flip, the Q out 9 is mark Zero. Considering about the code for DC balance algorithm, this is the VHDL code for possibility 1, 2, and 3. The fourth used algorithm is embedded of horizontal sinks and vertical sinks. In HDMI, the pin horizontal sinks and vertical sinks are not available anymore. Instead of that, the synchronization signals are sent through the TMDS channels. This is the data flow for the embedded of horizontal sinks and vertical sinks. The main idea of this algorithm is to use some special code to signify when horizontal sinks and vertical sinks are sent. The special properties of the code is that they have more transition than the normal data. They have usually 5 transitions to 7 transitions compared to less than 5 transitions of normal data. The algorithm is between the transition minimization and DC balance. If the video is in the active area, the data will go to DC balance normally. If the video is in blanking period where 
Zone sinks or vertical sinks on are both horizontal sinks and vertical sinks need to be transferred the special code as ascent. This is the code for implementing the embedded horizontal sinks and vertical sinks. The four technologies are duplicated on Video Data Channel Blue or TMDS Channel 0, Green or TMDS Channel 1, and Red or TMDS Channel 2. After the whole four technologies are implemented, the stream has been encoded from 8-bit video data into 10-bit TMDS data. The final step that needs to be done is to serialize the stream and send it to the TMDS channels. This is the code for serialize the stream and send to the TMDS channels. This is the demonstration for implementing the above algorithm on Vivado. The first part starts with initialize the input and output, declaration of the used clock, declaration of the used signal. Here, you have the ability to choose which resolution that you want to output by changing the parameters. The chosen resolution here is 640 and 480. If you scroll down here, This is the initialization of the OBUFDS, output buffer of differential signals. The primitives is implemented for output of TMDS clock, TMDS channel 0, channel 1, and channel 2. This is the initializing of the clock for serialize the TMDS data. The clock is used to generate the pixel clock. The next part is counterpart this is exactly the same as in VGA part and from here implementation for HDMI this is the implementation of the transition minimization as you can see here this is the XNOR of the stream XNOR is implemented when there are more ones in a stream and this is XR of the stream XR is implemented when there are more zeros in the stream the next algorithm here is DC balance and the embedded of horizontal sinks and vertical sinks. The whole process is implemented for three channels, blue, green and red. This part shows the output video data are the white screen where blue, green and red video data are FF which is 255. We can program the device by pressing program device. Here we check the name of the bit stream. The screen on the right hand side is not showing any signal. This is Zybo with a VGA port and a bidirectional HDMI port. The HDMI port is connected to the HDMI port of the screen by an HDMI cable. And we start to download the bit stream to the FPGA device. The screen is showing a white screen and recognize the signal of HDMI. Great! What else can we do with the video signal? If we change the video signal, we can change the output to the screen such as making a square in the middle of the screen or making the square running over the screen. Here we can try to generate a different pattern of the screen which is a color bar pattern. To generate a color bar, we just need to make a simple comparison of the horizontal and vertical counter where uh, give out different color in the different part zone. This is a code that has been prepared before. We will uncomment this code here and then we have to comment this line out. Hmm, there is something. Ah, okay. We have to uncomment this line also. Okay, final check, no errors, then we generate the bit stream. The Vivado will generate a new bit stream for us. 
The whole process took around 3 minutes. Okay, the bitstream has been generated. We have to redownload the bitstream back to the device. The screen will turn to blue and then a color bar pattern is shown on the screen. Great, so this is the color bar. Okay, what else can we do with the output? Change color on switch press. This is gonna be something cool. Okay. So this code is about uh, generate a screen, and on each press of the button here, the screen color is gonna change based on the the number of the press. Okay. No error. Okay, generated its stream. Okay, bit stream complete. We program the device. Okay. It show a black screen, and if we try to press the button, yeah, okay. Try this. Okay, this is for blue. Okay, okay. Uh, we float around the second button. Okay, this is for green. Press, 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 press. Okay, whopper valve. Okay, the next, the third button. Okay, this is for red. Press, 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 press. Okay, whopper valve. Okay, um, let's try in combination. Blue and some uh, green. Blue, green, blue, green. Blue, green, blue, green, and then some red. Red get in. It's gonna turn to white. Yes, because a combination. Okay, red is um wrap around. Blue wrap around. Green wrap around. Okay, how about start with red first? Then blue. Okay, red and blue will make yellow. Oh no, red and green. Okay, red and green is make yellow. Okay. Uh it's red rubber around. Okay. Let's start with blue and then add some red. Blue again. Red. Blue. Red. Blue. Red. Blue. Okay. Blue is rub around and red is rub around. And this is um, what's the program doing? It's uh, change the color of the screen based on the button pressed. To conclude, there are four main technologies implemented on HDMI interface the differential signal technologies, the transition minimization technology the DC balance technology and the embedded of horizontal sinks and vertical sinks technology. Each of the technologies plays an important role in the HDMI interface. By understanding this technology, we can output an HDMI signal to the screen using an FPGA board. This concludes the part of outputting an HDMI signal to the screen using FPGA. Thank you for your attention.